It's been three years since the United Nations representative in Sudan called Darfur the world's greatest humanitarian crisis. Human rights groups believe around 200,000 people have died in Darfur since rebels began to wage war against Khartoum. Well, Al Jazeera has traveled to the peaks of Jebel Mara, a mountain range in the heart of Darfur, where rebels have established what they call liberated areas, places completely free of central government control. And in the first of a series of exclusive reports, Mohammed Val asked the commander of the local Abdul Wahid rebel faction about his continuing fight against the Sudanese government. First, a chopper flight over rebel hideouts. Then, an armed convoy beyond the line of government control. Uh, this is Abdul Rahim. A handover to the fighters of Abdul Wahid. A three hour walk in the rain. Nine kilometers up the slopes of Jebel Mara mountain, we had only begun to reach the rebel heartland. To see the rebel army chief, takes a long and painful trek. But the man who's never shown his face to the world is going to give Al Jazeera his first ever media interview. Commander Gadura, the military chief and co-founder of the largest rebel movement in Darfur, is the powerful ruler of this mountain. His orders are incontestable. And every rock and tree is his temporary headquarters. <laughs> With grand gestures, he explained why he deserted the Sudanese army to become a rebel. I was in the army of Omar al-Bashir. I deserved a military promotion more than once. But it was denied to me and given to other soldiers who had the right tribal connections. One day a commander who trained us told me, no one wins his rights until he fights for them. Gedura and the movement's political leader Abdul Wahid started the Darfur rebellion in 2001, saying they wanted social and economic equality for the region. Six years later, while other rebel factions have signed peace or are in the process of signing, Abdul Wahid continues to hold out. Planes continue to bomb us daily. The demands of our displaced people weren't met, and they didn't disarm the Janjaweed as promised. We are ready for talks, but only if there is going to be something new on the table. If it's going to be like the previous Darfur peace agreement, no way. Forget it. Abdul Wahid's movement represents the Fur, the largest ethnic group in the region, with thousands of farming villages across Darfur's greatest mountain range. Gedura says he has 75,000 armed fighters and a power base of millions. All the displaced civilians from Abu Shok camp to Kalma camp and in Chad and South Darfur, all of them are following Abdul Wahid. If you don't believe it, just go and ask anyone in those camps, even little children. No one will return to their village unless and until we sign a peace agreement and we win their rights. Abdul Wahid and his men have the most hardline position of any rebel group, demanding a no-fly zone over Darfur and an oil-for-food program on Sudan. They don't seem in a hurry to descend from the mountain for a peace deal anytime soon. Mohamed Val, Al Jazeera, from Jebel Mara Mountain, Darfur.